Hey everybody and welcome to another video from Electronic Armory. In this video we'll be talking about the UI slider, a UI widget that allows user input between two values. Good UI design dictates that we restrict input from the user to be as easy and restrictive as necessary. In other words, if you're asking the user to input an amount of money, for example, don't make them put in the dollar sign, euro or pound, and certainly don't present them with a full QWERTY keyboard. They only need numbers and a decimal point. By restricting the input, you save yourself from having to write a lot of validation code. This is a luxury we enjoy in the mobile development world that other platforms don't have that have full keyboards. Now, let's say that you want to restrict the user to selecting a temperature between negative 10 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. You could simply allow the user to input a number, but what about the negative sign and what if they think it's in Fahrenheit and want to put in something like 90 degrees or something like that, which is almost boiling in Celsius, but only mildly hot in Fahrenheit. So the user might be confused and you want to kind of restrict that, that confusion and limit it to where you can and where it makes sense. So we'll be using the UI slider to restrict and coax the user to input values they want while also communicating to them the relative value on the scale. In other words, if the value is on the upper or lower levels of that range, and that'll kind of indicate whether they're, what they think they're inputting is actually what they are inputting. So let's get started. So we're gonna start off with a basic application here. We're gonna go over to our main storyboard file here on the left-hand side. And we get our main storyboard view here, and then we can go up to our widget here or hit if we don't have that selected we can hit command shift l to bring that up which is what i prefer to use and you can see i previously had a text window open and if you just type in slider we'll get our ui slider widget and then we can click and hold drag that in wherever you want to i'm going to maybe just put it right in the center and then i can expand it out to take up the full width now, obviously, uh, depending upon if you have any labels or anything associated with this, such as if you just type in a couple of the letters there, you know, how big you want that label, et cetera. But uh, let's just put in temperature. If I can spell it, there we go. And then we want, this is just a label for what the value is, um, what this slider actually does but we want to give feedback on what the value of this slider actually is. So I'm going to alt drag, so hold down the alt key and then drag this down using your mouse, of course. And this will be our output uh, label that we're going to actually take the value of the slider, put it out to this text, um, this label here. So I'm just going to put in some placeholder value, let's say 40 degrees, something like that, whatever, maybe put in the Celsius uh, moniker there so we know what we're, what units we're using. And we're going to hook this up to our, our view controller here on the left hand side. Now we've covered this in previous videos, so I'm just going to go through it really quickly. Um, wrong button, make sure you select the, the side by side view. And we're going to expand this out so that we can see what we're doing. If you hold down the shift key and scroll your mouse wheel up and down, that'll shift up and uh, side to side rather than up and down if you don't hold the shift key. So just kind of center this in the view so you can see both of these. And in my, um, in my view here, let's uh, go ahead and close this, maybe make this a little bit smaller. And here we're going to hook up a... Um, an IB outlet or an interface builder outlet. So hold down the control key, click and drag and drag it over here so we can make a connection to our slider. I'm simply going to call it temperature slider. And then for our label that we want to output the value is as we change this back and forth, what, this, uh, what the value is is going to go here. So we're gonna click and drag and also make an, another connection here and this one is going to be called simply output label. I always like to end my variable names with the type. So as I'm typing it in, if you name this temperature label, you would know the difference between temperature label and temperature slider. You know where to get the value from each rather than having the compiler figure that out for you and complain if you get it wrong. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do really quickly, I'm just going to hook up the constraints so that it looks good on all of our devices. So again, we've covered this in previous videos, 
but we're gonna hold down the shift key, leading, trailing, we're gonna center it horizontally, uh, actually just vertically in this case, and that's all we need to do so we can hit enter and then do the same thing. So control drag off to the side and hold down the shift key, click, click, and then we're gonna center this vertically. Um, actually, not center it vertically, we're gonna actually orient it to the bottom, so click and drag to this, and we're gonna do the vertical spacing to the unit above it, and then of course we need to do that real quick here too, so. Just gonna key everything off of position onto this UI slider, so drag this down here, and you guys have probably done this a million times by now, but just make sure we get that out of the way so it doesn't look crazy when we launch our simulator. All right, so now that we have two outlets for this, uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and talk about the differences here. So when we slide the slider back and forth, we want to be notified of that happening. So as I take the slider, drag it back and forth, I wanna have a function that we can examine the value, take that value and then output it to this label or do something more interesting with it in your own application. So temperature slider, temperature slider, we're going to need to hook up a target to this. So if you just type in temperature slider and then add target, add target will uh, allow us to add a function um, that we can call on a particular target. So if we go ahead and select this code and actually let me switch over now when we're in code mode. Here we go. Okay, so what is the target? So select that, the target's actually gonna be our self and by self I mean the current class that we're currently in. So this guy here, so we're just gonna do self for the target and then control forward slash to go to the next uh, placeholder. And the action is going to be asking for a selector. Now the selector is going to be the function name which we don't have yet, so let's skip that for now. And one of the more important pieces is on which event do we wanna get this function called as we're sliding the slider back and forth. And so for these, if you remember from previous videos, if we hit the dot, it'll pull up with a whole bunch of uh, classes that are able to be put in here. So it was looking for a UI control event. And so all these are applicable UI control events that we can put in here. And the one that we want is the value changed, which is at the bottom. If you wanna do something fancy, you can do touch up inside, outside, drag, etc. There's a whole bunch of options for getting notified as the user's interacting with your widget. And these are pretty consistent across all of the UI widgets. So if you ever learn, if you ever wanna go through these and learn what these do, they're applicable to other widgets as well. So it's pretty useful information to know. But uh, the most interesting one usually is value changed or if it's a button, it'd be touch up inside or something like that. So once you select that, now we need to create uh, a function for this so that we can actually plug that function in to get that function called when our value changes on our temperature slider. So this one's pretty easy. So we're gonna create a function. You can call it almost whatever you want. And this one I'm gonna call temperature slider did change to signify that it's a function that gets called when it changes rather than maybe something else that you're gonna hook up. And it's going to have a optional input that you can have as a parameter. It'll come in usually as an any object, meaning it could be any object, but I'm going to downcast that to a slider so that we can uh, use the slider methods on it. Otherwise we have to assign it to another variable in order to get that code completion to work. So it is of type slider, and this will tell us which slider is sliding in case we wanna reuse this function for other purposes. Temperature slider did change. Now we're gonna go ahead and set our value from our slider, uh, this guy namely, into our label. But before we do that, we can now use the selector. So the way that selectors work is you just start typing in selector and it's looking for an objective C method. And because we're using Swift, we have to expose the underpinning uh, or the underpinned function to the objective C runtime. And so the way that we do that is at objective C and that will make this function exposed to that runtime. So uh, if we go ahead and complete this line of code here, so select door, 
and then um, if everything's all set up the code complete should work fine so if I just type in temperature uh, we get the temperature slider did change and with its parameter there slider colon and so it takes care of all of the formatting for us um, sometimes it gets a little tricky when you have parameters in here multiple parameters but again if you have everything set up before trying to put it in as a selector then you should be just fine all right so the next step is to actually pull that value out of your slider which is uh, we can just get that using a let variable. So we're going to store it in and just say current temperature. And that's going to equal the slider that is being passed in. So this guy, or we can get it from our IB outlet if we want to. And it really depends if we were trying to reuse this function, we would want to use the parameter that's passed in. So either or would work in this particular case, but be mindful of that situation or why we would use one over the other. So we have the slider. And if you do the dot notation on the slider, we obviously have a whole bunch of different functions and member variables underneath that class. The one that we're interested in is actually the value of the slider which we'll get to in a second because we actually haven't set the range on this yet, but this will actually work out of the box. And so we're going to get the value out of that and we're going to store it in the current temperature. Now, if we put our cursor at the end of this value, hit escape, it'll pop up with the autocomplete and we can see that this is going to be a floating value and that should be fine for uh, the instances that we have in our our temperature so you can have you know 40.3 or, or whatnot however um, because this is a full point value it could have a very large precision meaning very many decimal place holders after that decimal place so for example four three nine two and just stuff that doesn't really make sense or at least for our application we don't want it in there so once we have our current temperature if we were just to take that output label and set the text value on it to um, this current, uh, well, right now it's a float, so let's go ahead and using string interpolation. Again, previous videos we've covered this, but allowing us to uh, put in a float value inside of a string so that we can say whatever that value is of that variable. We can say degrees and then the Celsius symbol in there and then we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and test this out really quickly. And again, this value is gonna be wildly different from what we want, but we'll go ahead and fix that later. If this is all you're looking for, hopefully that solved your problem. If not, we'll dive a little bit deeper into it here in a second. Okay, so here is our application in the default center. Uh, now we haven't actually done any code when the view did load. It's only getting set when we call this temperature slider did change. So you can actually call this manually in your view did change. Right now it's set to 40 degrees Celsius, but as we change this, you can see it goes from a value of zero up to one. And so this is not what we want, obviously, because that would limit us um, by quite a bit. But you, as you can see, we have 0 0.674, yeah, and then a whole bunch of uh, significant digits after that that we don't really care about. So let's go ahead and fix that first. Easiest way is to take this float value out, and if we don't care about any of those decimal places, to simply just typecast it into an integer. So if we run this really quickly, I'll show you what that will do. All right, so as we move this back and forth, you can see that now it just goes from zero to one. Well, I had one there for a second. Oh, there it goes. Um, and so what it's doing is simply just chopping off the uh, the decimal place, places after that. And so up until 99999, until we get a full value of one is where it gets. So 0 0.99999 is still zero. So that's probably not what you want, but let's go ahead and explore some of the values of our UI slider. So by selecting that and then opening the side panel that's not open, is we can select a minimum value and a maximum value. So what I said was if we go from negative 10 to uh, let's say 50 degrees, maybe this is an app that records the 
daily weather or maybe it's a running app and you want to record the, the temperature for the day during your run, etc. You want to limit it to a range that makes sense because, you, again, you don't want those, those decimal places in there that really just nobody cares about. Like nobody's ever going to enter that it was a negative 500 degrees Celsius, right? That just doesn't happen. Um, physically speaking because <laughs> but anyway let's rerun this and see what we get so instead of going from 0 to 1 so as we kind of slide this back and forth you have 50 degrees which is the maximum and then dragging it back down we have negative 10 all right let's do one more thing before we let you go um, and that's going to be just to tie up this uh, initial value so as I mentioned because we have this function temperature slider did change and we're passing in the slider value all we have to do here is in our view did load is call that function manually and if you're ever wondering where this function gets called it's uh, the slider is uh, as it's being updated it's actually calling uh, something in here that says add to target when the value does change make sure that all the targets in this case ourselves gets called with whatever you're passing in here. So there's a whole system behind this that, that sets up the fact that when it changes that this method gets called. But certainly we can call this manually, as I mentioned. And in, uh, it's going to ask for a slider as a parameter, um, namely this guy here. But of course we have that as an IB outlet. So we'll just pass that in. And by default, if we go back to the storyboard real quick, that our value here is set to 1 and so you can see that uh, from negative 10 to 50 it falls more on the left hand side range uh, if you want it somewhere in the center or maybe a more common temperature let's say I don't know 20 degrees uh, it, that tends to fall right in the middle but uh, again if you maybe wanted 25 degrees maybe that's a little, a little on the slightly warmer side but here we go so whatever value you have in there is what that's going to be set at and then when the view does load, it's going to read in this 25 uh, degree value and then uh, change our placeholder text there. So let's give that a shot. Oh, and of course, I, I missed the label. This is supposed to have a label. So let's go ahead and insert the slider label there. Um, and that's denoted here. And this is a named variable. Um, oftentimes, I forget to do that. And if you don't want to put in the uh, the label here you can certainly change the definition or the declaration of this to be a underscore which basically says it's an unnamed parameter however I'd also have to change the signature here as well so you can see that broke a few things so it's just easier to click on the little stop sign with the the dot in the center and just have Xcode enter that in for you so once we do that we should be all good all right, so as I mentioned, the default value was 25. It set it a little bit right of center. And now as I drag this back and forth, you can see that it changes there as well. So I hope you found this video useful. If so, make sure you subscribe to get more videos on iOS, Android, and game development. And if you have any questions on this video, make sure you leave the questions in the comments below, and I'll try to get those answered for you. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.